Come close and listen, for it is time for my series review of Malazan, Book of the Fallen. Now hear what I have to say clearly. I agree with everything people say about this series. Everything. It is one of the most difficult fantasy series to read in existence. The plot lines are numerous, the characterization is different than what you're used to. Malazan is dense. Malazan is in every sense advanced fantasy. Now, I am an anti-gatekeeper. Everyone is welcome to read and enjoy whatever they like. But giving someone Malazan as a first ever experience of fantasy would be like throwing your friend who's curious about boxing into the ring with Mike Tyson on their first day at the gym. All of that being said, what Erickson has made here is a masterpiece, no question. After finishing the series, I agree with a lot of the points from its harshest critics, but I also agree with nearly every point from its most fervent fans. To put it like the kids today do, Malazan hits different, and it starts brutally. Gardens of the Moon should not be skipped, skimmed through, or ignored. But by God, do I acknowledge that it is a rough start. Most people who I have met who have read it say they barely knew what was happening. Erickson is the king of just throwing you into a world and making it your responsibility to figure everything out. I hope you like puzzles because the world building can sure feel like one at times. Or, of course, you can jump into an online forum and have someone explain it all to you. But fair warning, the second you start the next book, it will bring you right back to the confusion. That's right, the next book is a whole new cast of characters, which you've heard is true in a completely different country. Basically, unrelated in most ways to the last book. But it is absolutely a sequel. I will die on this hill. Read them in publication order and you like it, yes? The stories can be entirely disconnected, various books will hardly even tie into the final books. This frustrates a lot of readers. They complain online that their time was wasted, but if that is how you feel, I believe you are reading this series wrong. I believe the greatest appeal of Malazan as a complete picture, as a series, has accidentally flown under your radar. Let me explain why. After a quick word from today's sponsor. And this video is brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare is the online learning community where creatives can take their next step in their learning journeys. Skillshare is an amazing place where you can check out classes by amazing content creators like, for example, Ali Abdal and his video about how to edit videos. I get a lot of people who are like, Daniel, where'd you learn to edit? I'm mostly self-taught, but I'd be a lot better a lot faster if I had taken something like this. Whether it's writing, being creative, or even trying to start a new career path, Skillshare is the place where you can go to check on all kinds of new topics to start your brain, learn them by it. 2021 has already proven itself to be a bit of a crazy year. So that's why I think it's important that this is a place where you can set your own schedule. You learn when you have the time to. No deadlines, no pressure, just topics you're interested in and want to explore. This is an entire platform that's just focused on learning. So that means with the annual subscription plan, which comes down to less than $10 a month, you get to just entirely focus on the topics you want to learn about. And the first thousand people to click the link in the description down below will get a free trial of Skillshare today. So let me first reiterate the points I touched on before. Yes, Malazan is dense, it is difficult to get through, and it takes legitimate work to keep up with what's going on. You have to pay oh so close attention and draw conclusions of your own based on the evidence provided. Erickson will never hold your hand. He does not believe in doing so as an author, and he characterizes his people very subtly. You cannot look away. Don't blink, don't skim, pay attention. That is how you will survive Malazan. And I was frustrated. If you go back to my early reviews, I was immensely frustrated with this series. But the deeper I got, the more immersed in the world I became, the more I understood. And let me say something that might surprise some people here. There is not a single Malazan book that as I've gotten further from it and thought on it and meditated on its themes, 
that I don't enjoy more. Even the ones I gave glowing reviews to, the further I've gotten from them, the more they've percolated in my mind, the more I appreciate what was done. Now, how can this be? Well, I don't remember every plot line. I can't keep every character straight. It is as massive and uncontainable as its most harsh critics will point out. But that wasn't the biggest takeaway. Yes, I do love some of the characters now, and Erickson will craft individual scenes that will be seared into your brain until the day you die. But that wasn't the biggest takeaway for Malazan for me. The biggest takeaway, believe it or not, was the themes, the messages, the meta text to what Malazan is. Because this is grim, dark fantasy. There's going to be horrific battles and deaths, some of the most extreme dark moments in fantasy I have read. Yet, when this series finished, I felt hope. I felt catharsis. I actually didn't feel that severe case of post-series depression, even with how much effort is required to get through Malazan. Instead, it felt like I had just witnessed a perfect symphony, which the final notes of finally painted the full picture clearly in my mind. Of course, the story here in Malazan matters, and you should care about each and individual beat of the advancing plots, but I wouldn't say that should be the primal focus of your thoughts on the series outside of when you're reading. For me, the more I started to think about the broader implications of what Erickson as an author was saying, the more I appreciated this masterpiece for what it was. Malazan as a fantasy series is probably the best commentary I have come across within the genre in terms of examining what really motivates us as people, how the political pendulums can swing, the small that can lead to the huge, the control that can lead to rebellion, the evil that can lead to good, and the good that can overcome the worst in us. Rarely have I seen Grimdark used so effectively to truly pick apart how our minds can work. Going off from this, Malazan is also a brilliant, a sensational example of how fantasy can be used to exaggerate and emphasize various points of a story to really drive a message home. And that's something I have been saying for years. Writing within the sci-fi or fantasy genres do not detract from your abilities as a writer. If anything, they add because now you can go places you previously couldn't. And my lord, does Erickson like to go into extremes. And while he's there, he's never going to waste a page in terms of driving home various messages. This is not the simple theming you see so commonly in modern day pop culture of just love, family, and friends. While those are there, of course, instead it gets deeper into what can push us, what drives us, and it's never so overt in the text you're going to feel like your hand is being held. Because as I said, the hand-holding seems to be antithetical to Erickson's religion as a writer. So I believe if you got a hundred Malazan fans into a room and asked them about their biggest takeaways from the series, they would have various conclusions drawn, but each of them will have been made to think in a way no fantasy series has before. I say all of this to try and make sense of how I can agree with many of the critics, but not care about their criticisms now that I've finished. It was a marathon, it was a tough mutter, whatever great physical exercise you can talk about where you have to overcome the obstacle, but I felt that exact feeling you do after running a 10K, where it's like, I did it, and it was worth it and I've grown because of it. Let's get into some more of the actual details here. If you are a character reader, you are either going to love or despise the characters within Malazan. I recommend you do read Erickson's Facebook rant that I covered here on the channel and eventually led to him being interviewed by me, because I think it's a very important angle to the series to understand before getting into it. He has a specific way of character writing that is very anti what you are probably used to as a fantasy fan. Yet, as soon as your mind adjusts, I think you will love it. For me, it happened around book six or seven, where it finally clicked for me, and I started really loving the way he developed 
and characterized each and every person we came in contact with. It was subtle and yet somehow bold, where you couldn't really misconstrue who this person was, yet it was never the typical thing you see with authors now, where they have a grandiose action right away when you meet them to try and display exactly who they are. Everyone felt more human as a result. It felt like that actual real life impersonation you get from someone when you come in first contact. And then every subsequent scene with that character, you were watching out to see how accurate your evaluation was. That's the advantage of Erickson's writing. That real world feeling is so, so strong once you are there. Multiple of his characters are probably in my top 20 of all time from this series, and one is firmly in my top 10. And Amanda Rake, if you are someone who needs a badass who is just a presence in the room will scratch that itch for you and what Erickson ends up doing with this character as I said before hits different he makes the great choice of never allowing you the reader to be an Anamander Rake's head a great choice that I think enhances the overall impression we get from Andermander Rake, and I agree with Erickson's conclusion. That as an author, you can never actually accurately write the thoughts, the feelings, of someone on a scale of an Andermander Rake, and it paid off to the point where I think Andermander Rake is probably the most, oh my god, I feel his presence on the page, character of all time for the fantasy genre, in my opinion. But there are also definitely the more human ones that you will just love because, yeah, they feel like Whiskey Jack, who's someone you want to hang out with, your heart breaks for, you fist pump for, because unlike Anamander Rake, he is so, so, so human. Now, the most controversial point of Malazan as a whole, though, the world building itself, the history, the politics. One last time I will say, Erickson will not hold your hand, and with the greater effort you must take into also just judging these characters, it can become rather difficult to really understand, get your feet under you within the Malazan world. I still don't know at what point I kinda managed to do it at times. Certainly every new book with an all new setting, I was starting from square one with only the slight advantage of being somewhat used to how Erickson does approach his world building. There is a beauty to it, but this is going to be the most divisive angle to Malazan, which if you're aware of the series online, you know to already be the case. It's the biggest fantasy world in existence in my opinion. I don't think it's the most culturally rich, I don't think it's necessarily the most historical or mythological, but in terms of factions at play, pieces moving and that are understood and motivated thoroughly, it is the largest. And that's actually something from a world building perspective I seriously appreciate from Erickson. He never let anything feel like it was just happening because it needed to happen. Each piece of the puzzle is well realized and that is an accomplishment worthy of the praise Malazan receives. That's one of the few criticisms I see of Malazan that I just don't understand. There is a vividness to the movement of this world that I have not come across before. All right, that's been a lot of praise, and I try not to get specific with these videos because I don't want people to feel like they've been spoiled, yet also have a firm impression of what they're about to uh, experience if they pick up the first book. Let's go ahead and talk about some of my actual criticisms, though. While I do understand that not every plot line needed to tie into the end, and many of the plot lines that didn't, I would not remove because of their overall implications for the themes Erickson was working for and the impression you're left with as a reader, there were still a couple that I feel like, in hindsight, could have been left out or at least seriously condensed to not distract for the few pieces that do really lay over the entire series. The focus could have just been a bit more there and I would have appreciated it. Now, I don't agree with the criticism where everything with Malazan needed to come to this perfect pyramid. This is not the MCU. That's not what this author is going for. It's an experience of living in a continental expanse as historical events unfurl, and it's trying to be as realistic as possible. As a result, no, not everything going on is going to tie in beautifully and neatly at the end. That's an MCU approach to storytelling, not a Malazan one. But I'm also not saying it was done perfectly. There are some things that could have been removed, as well as some inflation of the cast of characters that just felt unnecessary. At times, there were people taking up the spotlight who I never became invested in, and towards the end of the series, I realized had not played a big enough role to justify their existence, in my opinion. And then there is the pacing. It can be slow. It's a buildup. Erickson writes towards events. For some things, if you're really invested in it, it can feel like this 
Oh my God, slow tension rising, moving towards this explosion and then you reach that zenith and it feels extraordinary. Other times, if you're not exactly connecting with the events, maybe you're a little too confused, you're not sure where this is going, then you start to struggle and it can get as bad as some of the worst slog moments in Wheel of Time. Not often, and I think the highs are so high it more than justifies them, but those are my honest criticisms at that point for the series overall. So closing this out, I want to talk about what exactly Malazan is. Malazan is the purest form of living in a fantastical world I have experienced as a fantasy fanatic. It goes above and beyond anything else I have ever encountered to feel real and like it exists in this visceral way that just is completely different than anything else I have ever read. Even from like classic sci-fi to modern fantasy, nothing has felt like the Malazan world once the gears start clicking and turning with you. The problem is it's not going to with everybody and you need to work to understand it all. It is the actual literary equivalent of being picked up knowing nothing and thrown into an alien world and you just start witnessing events without context. And so you gotta figure it out and you're putting the pieces together. How good of a literary Sherlock Holmes are you? How fast will you understand? There is the way out where you can go to the online forums. I certainly did at times and I don't regret doing so, but it's up to you to decide how much frustration you can take. My ending thoughts on Malazan as a whole are, this deserves its placement as one of the greatest fantasy series in existence. It's something a lot of people will quit and not get through and will just have memories of being frustrated with. And I don't think those people are wrong because it, it's different, it's not what they're used to. But for those who push through and get up to the crippled god and are able to say they read the first 10 of Malazan, I don't see how many people cannot at least appreciate the accomplishment that this world is. So that is my series review of Malazan. It's a frustrated one, it's one where I'm kind of in love, and it's hard to get into details with without spoilers because it's such a expanse. It's such a experience. So let me know in the comments down below if you think I did a decent job of giving you an impression of what Malazan is like as a series to get into, what you understand as a reader getting into it. And to my diehard Malazan fans, where should I go from here? What's the next Malazan book I should read? Because I know there's a lot going on. Anyway, guys, like and subscribe if you have not already. Hit the Patreon if you want to support what I do here. And have a good one, y'all. Peace. And of course, I'd like to record a special shout out to my latest high tier Patreon, Samuel Zanin. Hope it's going well, Samuel. Hope you're having a great day.